So um, if this, well, be careful. One thing I notice about this problem, all right, is that I have a product that is equal to 0. So whenever I have a product that is equal to 0, I know that I can now apply the 0 product, zero product property, right? This is going back from, from uh, chapter 2. This is exactly what we want to obtain. So we don't want to multiply this through because we're at exactly where we want to be at, right? That's the whole purpose why we factor, because we want to get to this point. We want to have a product that is um, set equal to 0. So now by applying the 0 product property, I can now set each equation equal to 0. And now it's much easier for me to go and solve this, right? So to go ahead and see, all right, when does tan of, tan of x, now remember, when we're looking with these multiple angles, don't worry about the 3x. Just worry about right there. And just say find all the solutions or find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Um, solve the equation. All right, we'll just do all the solutions um, for this one. So here, I'll just add 1, add 1. So tangent of x equals 1, and tangent of x equals 3x. So again, go back to our unit circle. All right, in this case, remember our main points. We have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. All right, so remember tangent of x is the y coordinate over our x coordinate for the points on the unit circle. So we can see that tangent um, is going to be at an angle at 0, 1 and at 0 over negative 1, right? It can't be these two because remember tangent's y over x. Well, if x is a 0, then you'll have an undefined function. Right? OK. So as of right now, I have 3x equals 0, and as well as 3x equals pi. Actually, let's just write them as 1. The angles, when these are true, are at 0 and at pi. I haven't, I haven't gone to writing all the solutions yet. Um, for tangent is equal to 1, remember there's, at this point, we have square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Well, even though these look like crazy, um, crazy little fraction numbers, we know that they're exactly the same. So if I take the y over the x, I know that's going to equal 1. Remember, that coordinate point is pi over 4. And if I look at the direct reflection of that one, that's negative square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2. And if that's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, that angle is going to be 5 pi over 4. So tangent of x, x equals pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. OK? Um, now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we're trying to look at this, um, if we're trying to find all the multiple angles, we're not done with this one yet. We still have to go ahead and divide. Now, the one thing to notice is when I divide by 0, um, and then I'm going to, if I have 0, then I'm just going to add to pi. So really, the only difference between all of these is just going to be pi. So I can really eliminate my solution pi and just have x is going to equal my pi. Then I can divide by 3. My solutions are going to be, um, actually, hold on. It's going to be pi. Sorry. If I have 3x, if I create this, if I find all the solutions, I can rewrite this as pi n. Because if n equals 0, that gives me my answer 0. That's why I got rid of the 0 as the answer. Because okay, if I put 0 in for n, then that's the angle 0. If I put n as 1, that takes me to that answer. So that's why I just rewrote it as that. If I want to find all the solutions, now I just divide by 3. And so all of my solutions are going to be pi thirds n. All right. In these two cases, if you look at here's my one solution, well, remember, we could keep on adding our coterminal angles by adding 2 pi. We could find this angle, add our angles to add 2 pi. But what I notice is when I get to this angle, to get to my next solution, I only need to go halfway around the inner circle, which is a distance, Nikki, of pi. pi. So therefore, instead of writing pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, plus 2 pi for both of them, I can just simplify this by just saying pi over 4 plus pi n. So you don't have to do that 2 pi n um, deal with that. Yes? I don't get why you put an n to 0 and put 2 away from 0. Because if you divided 3x on, on the other side, it would be 0. 
Right, but let's just look at, let's look at it, forget about the 3x for a second. Let's just look at it as, as x as um, x equals 0 and x equals pi. Those are our two solutions, right? If I rewrote them as, as one solution, I just wrote them as pi n. Now remember, n represents how many times we can add, um, a add any, uh, any coterminal angle with this, right? So let's say we add n is 0, right? So if n is 0, what is our solution? 0. zero. So it covers that. If n is 1, pi, right? And then if n is 2, it's 2 pi. It goes back to that solution again. If n is 3, it's 3 pi. See what I'm saying? So when we represent it as, as pi n, it takes care of that solution and that solution. It covers both of them. No, this is a solution as well. If I said find all your solutions, that is your solution point, and that is your solution. For all your solutions, those would be your two solutions built on that. Any last questions? Good. OK. All right, um, let's see here.